check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Today we're going to talk about the Z-Pax Duplex versus the Nemo Dagger two-person tent and just give you some stats on the differences, what I've seen, what I like about both, what I dislike about both so that you can make a decision or just get to look at someone talk about cool gear. <laughs> Anyways, starting off with the Z-Pax Duplex, let's look at the price first. The Z-Pax Duplex is $649 but as you see it back here, it's about $750, $749 or so with those poles that you see on the sides at the head and the tail end and then with the poles that replace the trekking poles for when I'm on bike packing trips. Then you have the Nemo Dagger that is $430 with everything pictured. So almost half the price of the duplex. But the main driver of that price difference is the material of both of these. If you've done research, this is your typical like ripstop nylon. This is your Cuban fiber slash Dyneema tent, which then leads to the weight difference. The Z-Pax Duplex is 19 ounces. That's like one pound, three ounces. And the Nemo Dagger is three pounds, 14 ounces. So that's almost four pounds versus almost one pound. Four times the weight here, double the price here, almost. All right, enough talk about the outside. Let's take a look inside and I'm gonna torture test the size because I'm six foot six, which is what, like I think 98 centimeters or something. Six foot six, I take up a lot of space. So if you're smaller than that at all, know that you'll fit in both of these tents. <laughs> all right, first thing we'll do is check out the vestibule space and compare one to the other. And my helper for this is probably worst case scenario here. This is a 70 liter pack but the tall version, so I think it's like 72 or 75 liters. And then I'm gonna take my shoes off, which are size 15 boots, and put them in there, which is probably more space than anyone will take up normally on a camping trip. Let's see how they both handle it. Okay, torture testing the vestibules. We've got my 70 liter pack that's helping me out. On the left, my size 15 boots on the right. And that gives you a good idea of how much space you actually have in the vestibules then the last thing that i think is really cool again is the three-sided vestibule so you have this side here you have this door that you can open and then you have this side as well where you can still have storage so unlike most tents that have just two where you can have one open one closed this vestibule is definitely larger and you can split it out into three ways you could also open this all the way up and roll it up back here so you could have one wide open door just one door open you can have them both wide open as well. So I think they did a pretty good job here with the vestibule. Torture test for the vestibule. You'll see the pack is laid there, the boots. It does cover both, but there is much more space in the Nemo than there was in here. Okay, so looking at space inside of the actual tent where you're gonna sleep, I am six foot six. And here we go. Put my feet normal. And then just lay down normal. You, you can see this gets, you know, take the hat off. This gets, I, yeah, that's close. That is, that's one hand width between my head and the top here. So you can imagine with condensation and then with the beanie on and with the sleeping bag or quilt over my toes as well, right? Over my toes, it's gonna rub onto this. So six foot six, I don't fit inside of this tent. All right, same Nemo tensor pad. Now let's lay down. You see my feet are kind of almost touching there. And then on this side, I have maybe, maybe a little bit more room. Not by much, honestly, not by much. So I would call them almost exactly the same in terms of space. Now, the one thing is, you know, the Z-Pax isn't set up with the pole system, so could be a little different if I'd set it up differently with the stakes since it's all based on tension, so maybe that's a little bit user error, but I usually sleep in this tent whenever I've taken it on any sort of trip with 
plenty of space, like plenty of space uh, past my sleeping, past my quilt and above my head. So maybe it's just a user error on this specific setup, but that's real. This is real world. You could possibly set it up like this. So six foot six, I kind of touch at the beginning and end, but I still have, I still have room above my head and um, over here. I mean, I, I don't know what this move. So I don't know. Again, I, it, it definitely feels like there's more room in here than there is in the, in the dagger. Now Nemo claims this to be 50 inches wide, but this is a 25 inch wide pad. And you can tell that there is not another 25 inches here for another pad without drastically pulling down the whole rest of the tent. I have two sleeping pads in there, the Axle Air wide, and this is the Nemo Tensor Insulated Long wide. And you can see that they don't fit. 25 inches, 25 inches. This is a 50 inch tent but look at where that pad is when you actually put them side by side. The duplex, just like the dagger, does not fit two wide pads, 25 inches wide, 25 inches wide, right? But this doesn't claim to, this says 45 inches and it looks to be about the same exact space in terms of if you put them side by side together, you would have the same issue where it pulls down the sides of the tent. All right, now let's talk about sitting. Wow, the rain's getting really bad now. <laughs> I hope that's not too loud. Talking about sitting up, this supposedly has 42 inches of headroom and sitting up perfectly straight on the tensor on top of the pad, so three inch pad, I have about two inches again. So that's how much I have before my head would touch the netting. You can see what is this? I'm sitting up again, sitting up on the pad in the middle of the tent. And I have about four inches. So I had about two inches in the dagger, about four inches here. I don't know what the measurement should be here. I mean, I can put it in here, but real world testing, right? Not what someone said in the lab. This is same guy, same straightness. And I have significantly more headroom. Next, let's compare some features. In the Nemo, one of the cooler things that I've seen in not many other tents, but the Nemo does, they have these light lofts where you can put your headlamp here and shine it and this fabric actually diffuses the light and casts a cool little almost like spotlight on your head here for you so it takes the light diffuses it and spreads it across the whole tent and there's one on that side and one on the other then they have some pretty good big pockets on each corner that's actually pretty usable so you see here that's a stuff sack to give you size that's probably a little bit bigger than a phone and then on this side then on this side you have another stuff sack for the Nemo tensor which is probably bigger than a phone but still you can see it's nice and big throughout the whole tent something that I really learned to like is these little loops so it does have these loops and then you'll see in my duplex what I did with the loops because that's super handy and I'm assuming it's for like the garage a little lift thing that you can put more storage in here, which would be awesome. A nice feature that I like about the Nemo inside is this door. So the fact that the zipper, zipper is like this J or D zipper, and when you have it fully open, it hangs down but doesn't actually touch the floor. So this, if you're, if you're in mud, right, if outside is muddy and rainy and wet, and you open this up, it doesn't actually get in the mud so the door stays clean and then it's easy to just pull it back and clip it back there. But... This is really nice, and the zipper is obviously, the zipper is obviously quality, good quality. The only other real thing that you'll use, in my opinion, is the fact that you can open, oh, if I would have done this right, oh, here we go. The fact that you can open this up, and then there's Velcro here to, to hold this open, so if it's a rainy day like it is right now, you can still have some ventilation but still protect you from the rain. Now, in terms of little features and things that you have inside of the tent, you have two pockets instead of four, and they're on the sides instead of in the corners. So two pockets. These pockets are definitely smaller than what you saw in the Nemo. Definitely smaller, but I've never needed more than that. Then, if you remember in the Nemo, there was a lot more clips. There's only two here. So what I've done with these is taken some Dyneema, run it across, and then put this hammock organizer on here 
but this same setup you can do in the Nemo because it had the same little loops in there. So in terms of other features inside the tent, you have these that can actually lift up the bathtub floor. So if you want more ventilation, you can lower this. If you want less ventilation, you can pick it up. And talking about the doors or the zippers, instead of the D or J, these are rainbow. So pros and cons. The con is this falls all the way down. So if you are muddy, they could fall in the mud. However, you just get used to, you know, unzipping them and tossing them inside. The nice thing is then you have this almost, almost perfectly unobstructed entrance, this massive entrance that you can just go in and out super easy. The last thing I'll call out with the duplex is this little system to hold the doors. So what it is at the end of the door, there's this little D loop, D ring. And then there's this like double hook thing that holds both the doors. And then in theory, right, you can pull this to tighten it, which sounds great. But when you're inside of the tent, in order to do this, it's like this game where you gotta hook them both on here and then keep them there and grab, make sure you grab the right string and then pull them both tight and hope that none of them come loose. And once they're both tight, they're, all right, good. Then to undo it, you gotta pull this back a little bit, open up a door, then you can pull this tight again if you wanna open it up or get out. But this whole system, it's just, it's not as easy as grabbing a zipper and pulling it by any means, by any means. It probably saves some weight. That's probably why they did it. But I'm not a big fan of this because right? my back is already a little sore from just holding me up like that. One feature difference on the outside is the material. So this is made of Cuban fiber, which completely sheds water. So these rained, these experienced the same amount of rain and this is dry to the touch. It's probably been about 10, 15 minutes. And you can see here, you still have a bunch of water. So when you go to pack this away, you're gonna pack all the extra water weight. And then on top of that, you have the fact that mold can grow. Whereas that, in just 10 minutes of no rain, it's not even sunny out, right? It's just not raining. This guy's dried out already. This one is still sopping wet. The last real big difference that I'll touch on is the setup of both of the tents. This tent is a freestanding tent, meaning it doesn't need stakes. It has the whole pole structure that you can set it up on. Now, if you did want to set up with the fly, the fly does require four stakes, and then I'm sure it's recommended to stake out the corner. So at the end, this requires eight stakes to fully set it up like this. This requires eight stakes to fully set it up like this, but it could just be six if you didn't do these little head and foot end extenders, right? Because you can just do the flat tent, which if you're not 6'6", there's still plenty of room to do so. I did recently find out that Z-Packs made a freestanding kit. So in theory, you could take the Z-Packs and make it completely freestanding if you're willing to spend another $125. All right, I'm really interested to hear. Do you think the extra $300 for this setup is worth it over the weight savings that you have over this setup? You also have a couple more features and maybe it's a little more user friendly in this setup compared to the duplex. But this, in terms of packed size and weight, it's in a league of its own compared to this guy. So which one do you prefer? Which one would you buy? And if you actually have one of these, let me know down below which one you like. All right, as always, thank you to my patrons. I super appreciate your support. I'll keep delivering good stuff like this. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you on the next one. Big, 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 big